we collect probably about 50 million post-consumer juice pouches, 50 to 100 million post-consumer juice pouches per year. Wow. And then we collect another three to 400,000, sorry, three to 400 million uh, uh, factory uh, juice pouch, factory waste juice pouches a year. And we take basically all of America's juice pouch factory waste uh, that exists. That's unbelievable. Hundreds of millions remember, per year. Like, sorry? Hundreds of millions per year. Yeah, like all in about half a billion per year, but that's just on juice pouches. I mean, we collect um, 300 right. types of waste, and that's just juice pouches. Okay, that's awesome. So let me, I just want to clarify that. I'm going to do a formal intro sure. for you. Um, watched all your videos. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I am very excited to have Tom Zaki, who's one of the top eco-friendly entrepreneurs on the planet who's actually saving the planet. Tom is the founder of TerraCycle and his company makes consumer products out of, lack of a better word, garbage. And one example, they've collected over 1.5 million cigarette butts, I think in a year, hundreds of millions of juice pouches. They make goods out of, out of them from backpacks to fence posts, many other things. Tom, thank you for joining me. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, Tom, since it's Inspired Insider, my, one of my biggest questions is, what was the lowest point you had and then how you fought through that? Well, um, so I'll answer this in two ways. Like the specific lowest point for us was uh, near the beginning. It's easy, you know, the beginning is very raw uh, and there's a lot less sort of insulation, if you will, for, uh, for, for failure. You know? Here, there'd have to be a tremendous amount of negatives that happened before any real fundamental issues occurred. But back in the day, uh, you know, when we first began, it's very significantly more raw. And uh, I remember a time when I was living in the photocopy room of our basement office. I'd already dropped out of uh, school at the time. And uh, we had 500 bucks in our bank account. And uh, uh, we were at a position where, you know, it was very, very dark. I had no idea how I'm going to pay the bill. No idea how I'm going to even, like, you know, turn on the lights tomorrow. Yeah, it's tough. And it was very hard. But here's what I've learned. And there's been other moments. That's maybe the most. But there's been other moments where, you know, it's sort of you come to a turning point. Maybe the idea that you were thinking on at that time is not working as well. And you need to make a fundamental alignment. What's been magical? Every time there's been such ridiculous negatives. Yeah. It's also been the birth of the biggest innovations we've ever had. Mm. Um, the, when we had no money, uh, uh, at the very beginning in 2003, we decided to start packaging our uh, first product, liquid worm poop, liquid, uh, uh, yeah. like, you know, basically uh, uh, worm poop, which is organic waste fed to worms, uh, uh, liquefied. Yes. We started packaging it in new soda bottles because we, we just could, couldn't afford any packaging, so we went through people's garbage. That actually became a fundamental innovation and is why that product ended up within months getting listed at Walmart, Home Depot, Target, you know, mm. everywhere, right? Um, once we realized that we were losing, another example of a big turning point when we were realizing that we were making all the products ourselves and losing a lot of money in the process because mm. we were trying to compete at Walmart and Home Depot and large mm -hmm. big box, mm -hmm. we decided to stop that completely uh, and outsource uh, everything, as I'd already described earlier. Mm -hmm. Massive positive innovation and turning point, but came from desperation and struggle yeah. but you know they say this about you know there's a lot of good metaphors in nature if you want a rose to bloom and have tremendous amount of roses on it what you need to do is hurt it you need to put it through pain right so if you have a rose and you cut it back a lot which is very painful for the rose mm -hmm. right then it's going to create a lot of roses and it's going to look beautiful and it's going to really work hard but if you don't cut it and let it you know just go all over the place it won't even have a single rose on it and so you know, there's something to be said. Pain yeah. creates strength, you know. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of that thing. What, it, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And there's right. a lot of truth in that. Yeah. And especially in business. But as long as you come with the attitude of how are we going to solve this, not deep depression like it's over. Because then it will be over. Right. So that's what you think about. You think about this pain is just making me stronger. And I, there's something on the other end that's going to be yeah. more innovative. Yeah, and look, don't get me wrong, I don't seek it out, okay? Um, absolutely, you know, I, I hope to avoid it because, uh, you know, I'd like to live in a stress-free world. Right. But I always remember all these innovative moments every time there's stress and I, that really helps me get through because what basically the stress is saying is what you're doing now isn't quite working, adapt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Tom, on the other end of it, what's been one of the proudest moments that you look back at? You know, it may seem small, but... Um, the, the moments, and it's not one moment, but it's sort of these moments when I'm in a faraway land, like, uh, you know, Israel. This actually happened. I was out there a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm finished my work, you know, very, very grueling day, and I get uh, uh, on the airplane, and I'm heading home, and the stewardess uh, uh, comes up and says, you know, would you like a bag of chips? You know, like they give away little salty snacks, and I say, sure. 
And I get the bag of chips, and it's an Israeli chip bag, you know, with Hebrew writing. And I turn it over. There's the TerraCycle logo hmm. in Hebrew. I, I, I don't know, you know, I couldn't, I don't speak Hebrew, so I couldn't tell you. But there it says, collect uh, uh, and recycle this chip bag through TerraCycle. And I was Amazing. like, that. Yeah. It's not the money. It's not anything. It's not the you know the amount of articles that happen or anything like that. It's it's when I can you know see that there's real impact happening yeah. all over the world. Yeah. That to me just tickles you know tickles me and it's exactly yeah. what I'm fighting for. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. 